Here we are, welcome to the unboxing and initial setup of our Class 35 HiMac Loco in our O scale. It's under the EFE brand of Backman Europe. Our Loco is D7021. We've bought the slightly weathered version. We're going to take you through and see how we get on. First off, to whet your appetite, I'll show you a short video clip of the Loco in action on the big layout. Looks lovely. There's our box. First thing to notice is that the weight in this thing, just in the box, just weigh the box, it feels quality. This is going to be a good loco. Let's see if we can take the loco out of our box here. As I said, it's a good weight to this loco. Hoping for really good things. A high mech loco, slightly weathered by EFE rail, and it's a subsidiary of Backman. I suspect it's Backman's posh locos. See over here the scale, OO scale. Perfect. Let's open the box and see how we get on. So, that end there. We're looking at the inner section now. First impressions are it's really well packed. Got these bits of polystyrene at either end. These things here aren't tape that's holding it, but uh, I think we'll find they're plastic other bits of uh, ballast that hold the loco safe while it's in transit. Still, it's feeling very chunky. So there we go, we tip it forward and take this Perspex part out. Again, I am impressed with the packaging. Nothing's going to get damaged in there in transit. We've taken out our instruction leaflet. It's a bit basic. It's just two pages of text and a few diagrams. And it looks like some T and C's on the back there. But we'll be looking at that later. So we'll put that to one side. We'll go back to our perspex here. We'll take these two bits of polystyrene off the end because I think that's just for packaging in transit and we're not in transit anymore. So we've got our loco there. We take that top bit of... There's a bag underneath with all bits of... We're going to use those later. That looks like couplings. Looks like snow plows, looks like brake pipes, all sorts of little enhancements we can put on the loco. So we'll put that bag to one side. And we'll take the loco out there, lay it down again safely. And I think we've got these clip things on top, unclip that, lift that up like that. Again, superbly packaged. See, nothing's going to bounce around in transit. And see what those bits... These are plastic. They're not bits of tape. These are plastic. Holding the loco nicely in there. And we can just simply go forward now and lift the loco out. Take the packaging away. There we are. The first look at our loco out the box. Let's have a close-up look. The general weight of the thing I think is really impressive. This is going to be a really good performer. You can really feel this is a powerful model. Here's the front end here and the detail is superb. Look, the little windscreen wipers, but some bits of detail are missing. In fact, one of the first things we see is missing is the couplings, but I've read the instructions and remember that pack that we took out of the, the main pack? Uh, they're in there along with uh, the vacuum brake pipes and other details so 
We'll be getting those out in a moment. Let's have a look at the other end first though. Lovely oval buffers. Really nice detail, the windscreen wipers again. No couplings, so I think we'll be sorting those couplings out first. That's a nice close-up shot of the front end. Just taking all the detail items out of this packet. Let's have a close-up look. I've already detached the two couplings which we need to put on the front and the back of the loco. So the couplings there in the front there, we'll go at fitting those in a moment. All sorts of detail, we've got brake pipes, vacuum pipes, these are snow ploughs. There's these two things here, fairly critical to any operation, is we've got to get the couplings on the loco. So here we are, we offer our coupling up to the aperture in the bogey assembly. There's two lugs on there, get one lug in and then gently squeeze the other one in and then push it all the way home like that. That's in. And I kid you not, how to get out again, it's just a pull out. Ease it out, pull it all the way out. There we are, that's done. Not sure how robust that's going to be. Couplings on both ends, check that they're on the right way with the hook hanging down. I've got to say, not that impressed with these couplings. They're nice and small and neat but they don't look that substantial compared to the normal back one ones which uh, are a lot more robust and fitted with uh, a screw rather than a push-in but uh, I've got to admit it does look nice and neat. Let's see if we can pop it on the track and see how it looks on there. I'm sure it's going to look absolutely superb. That's really worth getting out of the box. Let's just try a run up and down this little section, nice and gently. That is smooth. Smooth as you like. I'll do a wider shot. out. Now that's what you're buying, a really robust model. Let's come back to say hello. Looking through our instructions here, one thing I want to test now is the lighting on the front. It says in here that that front panel should light up with direction of travel. And there's two little lights on there, and uh, they're certainly not very bright when I was running up and down, but uh, that's how things were in those days. Uh, let's see if we can see those in the dark. OK, let's see if we can get the headlight panel to work. Let's just back the engine off the buffers. Take it gently to the buffers. There. Wind it up to full power, the buffer will hold it and we should start seeing the lights now. We can turn the lights out in the room. Look at that. That's the clear head code panel. Let's flip the loco around the other way and see what's on the other end. On real locos they they have a number one end and a number two end, don't they? Let's see what's on number two end. So we'll put the lights on again. I'm going to flip the loco around. And we'll run it gently up to the buffers again.
the switch on the right side. And we put the power up. And what have we got this time? Hey, it's a different head code. So all's working well. You can see the holes in the buffer beam on the HiMec, uh, which will take these detailed parts, specifically the brake reservoir pipes, the vacuum brake pipe, steam heating pipe. We've already got the coupling on there. I think it's fairly straightforward which bits are what. Those are the snow ploughs, these are the steam heat pipes and vacuum brake pipes. Looks a bit fiddly, but uh, it's pretty clear. Let's have a look at the diagram on the front page of the instructions. And that's telling you where you put the various pipes on the front of the buffer beam. I think that's fairly straightforward. A bit fiddly again, but straightforward. Let's turn to page two. Page two, we've got another diagram, which is how to fit the snow ploughs. Looks like you've got to take the buffer beam off there and get the snow ploughs on. But again, they're telling you what to do, so you take them off the plastic holders and clean them up a bit and put them on as per the diagram. This last diagram, this shows you how to retrofit DCC if you haven't bought the DCC version. This version is called DCC Ready. Again, fairly straightforward stuff. Just want to say a quick word about removing the body shell off the chassis of our Hymec Loco. You'll need this to do your DCC or any lubricating procedures. The instructions say gently prise apart the body shell from the bottom end and that's the bottom end there. You've got to do both sides at once, this side and that side. And it says about four lugs. Now the lugs are located about there and there is that that one and you need to do that side and this side at the same time and then carefully you can remove the body out now it's a bit tricky so just ease open both sides of the body at the position where those lugs are and then you can grab the one end of the chassis and it starts to come out like that not easy Got to be careful. Just quickly show you a few of those things again. So the lugs are there and there and there's two more on the other side and as you can see I've released them now and the body is half off the chassis and we can just gently but firmly, I think it says in the instructions, take the body off the chassis and there we've got our two pieces. You can see on the body there's the lug on the side and on the side of the chassis there's a couple of pads where those lugs fit. Well that's about it. That's unboxing and setting up your HiMec. If anybody's got any comments or any modifications they want to make let me know via the YouTube channel. Just finished now with a couple of shots again of the high making action on the big layout. Again, it's a real genuine model, I think. I think evocative is the word. Thanks for watching, as it says there. As I said before, if you've got any comments or if you've got any suggestions to improve the setup of the loco. Let me know via the YouTube channel. We're just going to finish with uh, another look at the illuminated head codes and uh, the headlights on the front of the loco. I'm rather fascinated with this and how it works. Remember, that's our number one end, lights up as 2B26, and we're trying to find the lights on what they say are the headlamps. And if we look closely, there's a red one and a white one. I'm not sure what that's all about but that is what happens and if we go to number two end we've got a different head code 7B20 and again you can see the red headlight and the white headlight 
I rather wanted to know what was going on at the other end. So this is what's going on at the other end. There's your red light and your white light again. We've just finished with a run off the blocks. Thanks for watching everybody.